Hello there children. Welcome to your English lessons for this week. My name is Mr Stewart and I'm a teacher from Sholing Infant School in Southampton and I'm going to be doing your English lessons for you this week. Mrs Francis uh, led your lessons last week and uh, they were really good. I watched them all as well and I hope you enjoyed them. And I'm going to be doing them this week but I'm going to be carrying on with lots of the things that Mrs Francis started with you. So you did games with her, we're going to be doing games as well. Uh, you were looking at some books by a man called Oliver Jeffers and we're going to carry on looking at another of his books this week too. So I hope that you really enjoy your learning this week. I hope that you can get on really well with it and I will try and help you as much as I can with the things that I explain and the things that I do so you can learn lots while you're at home. Up on my screen you should see the things that you're going to need for your lesson this week. Just like last week I'll put things up on the board and you can pause the video and just go and collect the things you need or do the jobs that I ask you to do and then restart the video when you're ready to carry on. So just like last week make sure you're sat really comfortably either on a, on a good chair maybe on the floor make sure you can see the screen nice and clearly try and see if you can get uh, other noises to, to stop so that you can really concentrate on what you can hear and see and you don't need much to be able to join in the lessons you'll be able to need to hear what I'm telling you but if you can get um, a pencil and some paper maybe a whiteboard and pen if, if you've got that but pencil and paper is fine then that will really help you with your lesson today if you've got someone to talk to about your work that will really help you too but if not don't worry you can just talk to me on the screen I can't really hear you but you can shout the answers and have a go at answering the questions if there's no other grown-ups or brothers or sisters who can help you today so I'm just going to give you a minute to go and get those things then restart the video when you're ready already super right this is what we're going to learn about today we're going to use some of your phonics knowledge to help you to recognize real or alien words. Now I know because you're in year one, you're gonna be really, really good at doing this. So I need your help with the game that we're gonna do in a moment. After we've played that game, we're gonna have a look at another of those Oliver Jeffo books. And we're gonna see if you can infer some meaning from what you read. Now I know those are some really big words, but don't worry, I'll explain all about it in a bit. So let's start off with your phonics and trying to spot real and alien words. We're gonna play a game with Ob and Bob. I'm sure you've used them in your school before. What you have to do is read the word, and then if it's a fake word, you give it to Ob. If it's a real word, you need to give it to Bob, and we'll see what happens. Right, let's go. Have a look at the word, try and sound it out, and then tell me whether you think it needs to go to Ob for a fake word, or Bob for a real word. What do you think? You think it's fake? Let's see, let's try and sound it out together. G, or T. Ought. Gort. I don't recognise it. I agree. Fake. Yo. What about this word? Fake or real? You're saying fake? Let's have a look again. Th ass. Th ass. I agree. It's a fake word. Yo. Here's your third one. You think it's fake again? Let's have a go together. P ow -n. Pound. I don't know that word. I'm going to agree with you. Yo. Well done. We've got three points. Let's see if we can get five points. Let's go all the way to five. Is this fake or real?
Let's sound it out together. D I T D I T D I T. I don't know that word. Yo. And here's our last word to have a go at today. What do you think? Real or fake? Let's sound it together. Soap. 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 I know that word. It must be real. <coughs> well done, children. We got five points. Let's carry on with our learning. So we've practiced using our phonics. Now we're going to have a look at reading together. And I have managed to get lots of books by this man, Oliver Jeffers. He writes some fantastic books that are really, really funny. And when I'm choosing a good book to read, I like to choose books that make me laugh. And Oliver Jeffers' books are really good at doing that. You might recognise a lot of the titles that I show you. The Day the Crayons Quit is one of his really well-known ones. Lost and Found is a really good book that's been made into a video too. And here's the one that you looked at last week with Mrs. Francis, How to Catch a Star. Do you remember what happened in that book? Do you remember what the boy did to try and catch the star? It was a good book to read, wasn't it? Well, there's other books with the same boy in it. The Way Back Home, it's another enjoyable one. But here's the one that I've chosen to look at this week. It's called This Moose Belongs to Me. Do you know what a moose is? Look, you can see it just there. A moose. This moose belongs to me. And as we read this book today, we're going to see if you can infer some meaning from what we read. Now, I used that word right at the beginning of our lesson. I said it's, it's quite a big, complicated word. So what does the word infer actually mean? It means that I want you to try and work out what's happening, even if Oliver Jeffers doesn't tell us in the words. So are there things that we think are happening, maybe ways that people are feeling, that we can talk about even if the words of the book don't tell us? That's what infer means. It means we work something out when it hasn't been told to us directly. And we're going to think very carefully about this boy today. His name is Wilfred and he's the boy who owns the moose. And as we read this story together, I want you to think very carefully about how Wilfred is feeling. Do you think you can do that for me? So listen to the words, look at the pictures and see if you can work out or infer how Wilfred is feeling. Let's read our story together then. I won't read it all today because I'll keep some of the surprising bits till tomorrow. But we're going to start off reading This Moose Belongs to Me. This Moose Belongs to Me by Oliver Jeffers. Wilfred owned a moose. He hadn't always owned a moose. The moose came to him a while ago and he knew, just knew, that it was meant to be his. He thought he would call him Marcel. He began following Marcel, explaining the rules of how to be a good pet. Much of the time, it seemed as though the moose wasn't listening. But Wilfred knew he was, mostly because he followed rule four very well not making too much noise while Wilfred plays his record collection. Sometimes the moose wasn't a very good pet. He generally ignored rule seven, going whichever way Wilfred wants to go. The moose had a very good sense of direction, 
and Wilfrid did not. And because the moose was particularly poor on Rule 7, subsection B, maintaining a certain proximity to home, Wilfrid quickly learned to bring some string along on their outings so he could find his way back again. Sometimes the moose was an excellent pet. He had no trouble at all with Rule 11, providing shelter from the rain. Or Rule 16, knocking down things that are out of Wilfrid's reach. Good work. One day, as Wilfrid discussed their plans for the coming year on a particularly long walk, he made a terrible discovery. Someone else thought they owned the moose. Rodrigo, you're back! Wilfrid was dumbstruck. This moose was Marcel, not Rodrigo. The old lady was mistaken and Wilfrid thought it only proper that he correct her. This moose belongs to me, he explained. And to prove it, he called Marcel. Heel! But the moose did not respond. He seemed more interested in the old lady. Good Rodrigo. Embarrassed and enraged, Wilfred rushed off for home. Poor old Wilfred. Did you enjoy that story? I think it's very, very funny. Do you think you would like to have a moose for a pet? Mm. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. But I wonder, as we read that story together, were you able to have a really good think about how Wilfred was feeling? Because remember, we want to infer some meaning from what we read. So by listening to the story and looking at the pictures, could you work out how Wilfred was feeling at different points in that story? Because I don't think his feelings were always the same. And this is what you're going to do for a job for me now. I want you children to have a really good think about Wilfred's feelings. And I want you to have a go at writing some words that maybe tell me how Wilfred was feeling. If you look at my screen, you'll see I've taken some pictures from the story of Wilfred. And just by looking at those pictures, you can see that his emotions, his feelings, are very different. What words would you use to describe how he's feeling? I tell you what, why don't you stop the video, have a good look at the pictures on the screen, and see if you can tell a grown-up, or you can talk to me and just shout at your screen, or maybe you could find a pet to talk to, and tell them how you think Wilfred feels. What are his emotions? What can you infer from these pictures? Pause the screen and have a go. Did you come up with some good words? Were your grown-ups, or brother and sister, or even your pet impressed? I know I was. Well, now you've had a chance to think about those words, I want you to try and write some of them down. So if you've got your pen and pencil and paper handy, or maybe even your whiteboard, now's the time that I want you to use them. You could set up your whiteboard a little bit like mine. I've drawn two pictures of Wilfred. One with a smiley face, because sometimes I can see he's smiley, and sometimes with a sad face, because I can see that sometimes he's sad. Why don't you have a go at setting up your piece of paper or your whiteboard just like mine? You can draw a line across the middle, one smiley face, one sad face, and then next to these pictures, write the words that you think describe how Wilfred is feeling. Use those words that you've just told your grown-up or told me and have a go at writing them down next to the pictures. Use your sounds to help you. Use your very best handwriting. 
and see how many you can come up with. Pause the video while you have a go and see how many you can find. How did you do, children? Could you think of lots of words that described how Wilfred was feeling? If you were a bit like me, you might have found it easier to think of words for describing when he was sad more than when he was happy. Here's what I came up with today. I thought of cheerful, happy, excited, glad and joyful. And I used those pictures of when things were going well for Wilfred to infer that meaning. These are the words I got when Wilfred wasn't so happy. Upset, sad, cross, angry, shocked and grumpy. Did you get any of the same words? Did you get any longer words than me? Well done if you did. And well done because that means that you've met today's learning objective. You've inferred from what you've read. Oliver Jeffers didn't always tell us how Wilfred was feeling, but we could work it out from the pictures and the words that he used. Well, children, that's about it for today's learning from me. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and do come back tomorrow because you'll be able to find out what happens to Wilfred and his moose. If you've got more time today and you want a bit of an extra challenge, you could always try and use some of those words that you thought of and put them into a sentence. Your sentence could go something like this. Wilfred was feeling... And then you could use one of my favourite words ever, because and tell me why. But that's only an extra challenge if you've got time and if you'd like to today. But thank you for joining in. Do come back again next time and I'll see you then. Bye for now.